Hi Virgo, welcome to SelfQuest. I'm Spence. This is a weekly reading for you for the week of November 8th through the 14th. I think I have that right, yes. <laughs> and I want to say we are between that new moon that we had last week on the 4th was the new moon in Scorpio. Yes, we are still in the midst of Scorpio season in the third week, beginning the third week of Scorpio season. And so we're between the new moon in Scorpio and that full moon in Scorpio's opposite axis, which is Taurus. So between the new moon in Scorpio and the full moon in Taurus, right now, this week, what we have to perhaps consider that might be important this week is on Wednesday. We have a major square between Saturn, Mars and Mercury. Well, Mars is really fiery. It can be fiery. It can be fiery, right? So always be careful with Mars when it squares anything. And Mercury is very often, it's what we're thinking and what we're saying, right? It's a communication as well. So combustible communication, squaring, you know, tension and, and issues with Saturn, the way things are done, right? This could be ultimatums. This could be difficult arguments, you know, uh, demands for change, things like that. So it harkens back to the Saturn, you know, squaring Uranus stuff all year, right? Those three big squares all year. So you might want to pay attention to that on Wednesday, okay? Now there's a beautiful trine at the end of the week. I think it's on Friday, actually, between the Sun and Neptune. And that really opens up so many good things to come of it. So as long as you're diplomatic through that that day in those squares, and of course it doesn't fall like a curtain, so just be careful in the middle of the week, right, in what you say. Okay, we're today we're using the Paulina Tarot. This is by Paulina Cassidy. It's a, a beautiful deck. I love the artwork. It's, a, it's line work. It's gorgeous. And Nature's Whispered Oracle Cards by Angela Hartfield and Josephine Wall, the artist. Love those. All right, so I'm going to start shuffling for you. I have shuffled previously, but I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more while I settle in with you and while you settle in with me. So if you would take a few minutes for yourself right now, okay, Virgo, and just take three deep, deep cleansing breaths. We're going to oxygenate the brain and lower our stress by bringing down the cortisol. Clearing the mind, all right, bring some oxygen in. Makes us feel better. Okay, relaxes the spine. That one just slid right on on the table, over, over the deck and onto the table. I love this. Oh, Virgo, you know, I've actually never seen this card. I've never pulled this card yet, but it says, be true to your heart. Look at that beautiful painting. Be true to your heart, Virgo. I'll read that for you in just a few moments. All right, so we're going to put those aside, and I will read that. Um, these cards have like one or two paragraphs, so it's a pretty quick read. But So I'm going to read you the message, the actual message, in a moment. But first, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these tarot for the tarot cards from Paulina Tarot. We're going to lay nine, and then we're also going to talk about the three cards on the bottom of the deck which is the subconscious stuff usually coming up to the surface to be healed, right? Stuff to talk about there. That's my process. <laughs> okay. Virgo, November 8th through 14th. Virgo, okay, gonna cut the deck. Yep, that feels good. I'm gonna read horizontally, vertically, and big picture, big picture for you today, Virgo. You know, Mercury retrograde was in Libra for weeks and weeks, and then, you know, it has a shadow period, it's in retrograde, and then it's post-shadow where it finally comes out of the full retrograde. Well, that's finally happened. Thank God, because I am all Mercury. And it kicks the door on the way out. That's what they say, and that is so incredibly true for me. So I have been tripping over my tongue now for a couple weeks. Okay, we have the Four of Cups, Wheel of Fortune, and the Six of Wands. I will show you each and every card obviously. Uh, then the Nine of Swords, Five of Cups, Ace of Wands, the King of Swords, the Star. Wow. Okay. And Tower. And the reason I'm smiling is because the row that it's in, this is a breakthrough. 
This is some kind of healing breakthrough for for you from a a broken heart that made you question yourself and feel like you couldn't trust or love or I don't know, we'll, we'll see, yeah. Okay, bottom of the deck, we have Seven of Swords, Empress, and Strength. Wow. Yes, this is healing heartbreak, healing from heartbreak. And be true to your heart. Wow. Wow. So like your heart is like the deepest ocean and you've had to go through a long journey. There's a ship on this card and I'm, she's looking through this like, there's a microscope looking into a conch shell and it's just like over spirals and spirals of time. Your ship has been riding the waves of your heart and you've been trying to get to the shore. All of it was for a reason, to grow you, to bring about in you a cathartic releasing so that you could get over not just the heartbreak of whatever happened for you, but the, the heartbreak of, of what it meant. Of the depth, breadth, and meaning of why love moves us to the extent that it does. Love takes it all, doesn't it? Unconditional love especially. And very often when we feel really, really heartbroken, sometimes it's because we've put too many conditions on love. You know? And when something goes wrong and we can't control the aspects of the situation that at least help us to feel safe, then we, we, feel, we completely come apart. We feel like we've lost all control over our lives. And then we feel like a victim. We don't mean to and we don't want to accept that role. And we might be angry and fight against that um, label. But in the end, we do feel victimized by someone. Because we we put the the responsibility or the blame on the other on the other person. This is you know when this happens. I'm not saying this is you. I'm saying that it's kind of the nature of being heartbroken because we had an expectation or we had a belief or we had trust in something, and in the end, it was disappointing. It was disillusionment. It was something that just wasn't meant to be for whatever reason um, at that time, in that way, whatever. All right, I'm going to read you that message first. Be true to your heart. Number 26. It says, okay, Virgo. In this moment, draw on the energies of harmony and union. Draw on the energies, right, of harmony and union when making your choice. The current situation is best supported using your intuition, not your intellect. There may be difficult decisions to be made that are not necessarily about love. Consciously be aware of what interests you, what attracts your attention, what stirs your imagination and creates passion in your life. What moves you, right? Do your best to ignore the persuasion of what others might think or say. Just trust yourself and don't allow your opinion to be swayed. What moves you? Yeah. It's like what... What makes you feel? Right now in Scorpio season in the deep waters of Scorpio, what actually makes you cry? And what makes you laugh? What makes you feel more than you have felt lately, recently? 
And the reason I ask that is that, you know, I'm going to go to the bottom of the deck next, but first I want to show you the first card I laid down for you was the Four of Cups. And you can see she's kind of refusing the cup that's being offered to her. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I, I should. I can't. I, I don't trust. I don't want. I, I can't feel. Right? It's all that. So it's when we feel more safe and sound in the state of being meh, just even keeled, just emotionally neutral, right? Not too high, not too low. I just need to keep it status quo because I feel more safe and sound that way, right? Under the deck internally, there's there was something here that happened. Seven of Swords. This could harken all the way back to your relationship with your mother. I'm sorry to say this, but this is internally, right? I don't want to trigger anyone, but when we're talking about Scorpio, we're talking about familial patterns. Very often the patterns of our ancestors, the way things play out in our families and how we repeat patterns or we break the patterns. So it's sort of karmic, right? So it's eighth house stuff, life, death, rebirth, and the transmutation of energy and what it takes to actually transmute it in our lives and bring light to the shadow, to the shadows inside of us. So when I see seven of swords, something that you've either wanted to avoid or some, somebody that lied to you, somebody you couldn't trust, or you know, just somebody you had a difficult relationship with that somehow in some way stole from you either your joy or your peace of mind. If this was about a sticky relationship with your mother, then it's about healing from that. It's about radically accepting that your mother was or is exactly who she was or is, and that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is who you are. No one ever said you had to be like your mother. No one ever said you didn't. No one ever said any of that. Take the best, leave the rest, right? Strength, and that's what it takes, self-mastery. It's knowing your light and your shadow. It's battling with your own demons. It's understanding from whence it came. From where was it born? Doesn't necessarily mean your mother. It could be anyone, it could be any person, it could be from, from within you, fighting within your own light and shadow. But, you know, the Empress and the Strength card, those are two major Arcana cards. So it, it's pretty deep. And it takes courage, by the way, to do this work. Have you been avoiding... I keep seeing the Seven of Swords. You know, it's like... He, it's avoiding. Avoiding. Looking deeper at this part of oneself, right? We each and every one of us carry... 23 chromosomes from our mother and 23 from our father. So no matter what, that cannot be extricated from you. It's inextricable. It's a part of you. It's in your cellular DNA, right? No matter who, what, how your parent was, your parents are, whatever it is, they, they certainly, you know, had bearing and impact on your life. So they're a part of you is my point. So this could represent you as well. And what's coming out of you now? What's being born into your life now? And what are you avoiding dealing with about yourself? Or about, you know, the archetype, if you will. The archetype of your yin energy. Your internal thoughts and feelings, right? That's the yin. That's the divine feminine within. You know, and the strength is... Uh, to know when to be yin, when to be yang, right? When to bring light to the shadow, when to tame the beast, when to, how to, right? This, this kind of thing. And the seven of swords may be wanting to avoid it or lying to oneself and saying, I don't have a problem with that. When maybe you do, right? It's that. It, we all do it, right? No judgment. No shade. No judgment here. Okay, so four of cups, but it's easier not to feel. It's easier... To just kind of be like, mm, robot, right? We all do it too. We do, we do, we all do it. 
Well, Virgo, something's changing. The Wheel of Fortune is major arcana. It is that we all go through seasons in our lives. These seasons are in divine timing and we have no choice. It happens. But with the Six of Wands, something is changing for you that helps you to recognize yourself and feel like you're going to get a win in life again. Like you get a win. So going from feeling a bit apathetic to changing in a way that helps you feel like, hey, aha, I'm, I'm happy to be me. Feeling good about yourself and your life again. This is changing you. It's changing your energy. Okay? And I'm maybe from moving from water, four of cups, into fire, six of wands. So we may, maybe between Scorpio season and Sagittarius season, which is fire, you may feel this change, okay? That will happen on the 21st or 2nd. So basically after the full moon, I think you're going to feel much, much better. Let the moon as it waxes, right? We just had the new moon, that sliver. As it waxes into its full light, by the 19th, when we have that full moon in Taurus, which is a sister earth sign for you, something may truly culminate to make you feel much better about yourself. Six of Wands. Because Nine of Swords, you've been in your head. You probably haven't slept well. You probably haven't been taking very good care of yourself. Because of Five of Cups, because of something, and this is in the center of the reading today, Five of Cups, that broke your heart that you just cannot let go of. You revisit it. It's like a, a door in the hallway of your mind. If, you're, if your mind was like a spiral, a spiraling staircase or hallway of doors, and there's just this one door. And it's like you keep opening the door and you keep going there. And you keep going into that room and keep examining. You look at your feelings and you look at your thoughts and you ask yourself, why did that go so wrong? Nine of Swords, fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, what did I do wrong, how did I remorse, all that, to, you know, defeat, sadness, grief, regret, Five of Cups, can't let it go, can't heal my heart or my mind about this because I don't understand why, I can't understand why, For then Ace of Wands, again, Perhaps this new beginning, wands being in the fire, suit of fire, again, maybe in Sagittarius, there will be this new injection, a new zhuzh that will come in and wake you up and you'll say, I can't, I'm not going to open that door anymore, I can shut the door. I get it now. I understand it was just a moment in my life, it taught me something, I had to learn the lesson. It actually broke my heart because I have a heart. I have a big old beating heart, which means I'm completely capable of love. And I'm completely capable of forgiveness. I'm completely capable of healing myself. I don't need the other person to necessarily heal me. I can heal myself. I don't need to hear a particular thing. I don't need to be acknowledged in any particular way. I may not even need to understand what happened. In the end, all I need to know is that my heart has been in pain my mind has been suffering through this pain and going back into that room and it's just been this nightmarish place I can't seem to get out of and now wisdom says ace of wands the time is now the time is now a uh, life is a changing wheel of fortune king of swords because you make the decision because you're wise the owl brings you that wisdom it brings you the wisdom and you make the decision. King of Swords. To have faith again. To have hope in life again. The star. That, my friend, is your breakthrough. Then the false foundation of, but this happened to me. I don't know if I'll ever get over it. Because this happened to me, man. It sucked. You know what the tower is? This false foundation that I had to come down, that this broke you. That was the tower. No, it didn't. The tower comes down because this is a false foundational belief. That you're driving yourself crazy over that somehow this broke you. No, it didn't. King of Swords. 
know your mind and own your mind. You control your thoughts and you can think better of yourself, of love, of the world, and even of the if it was a person that hurt you, hurt you or broke your heart, even of the person, you can think better of them. They were doing the best they could. They screwed up. They made their mistakes, whatever it was. Think better of it. King of Swords. Star. And then through faith, hope, and trust, forgive yourself. Forgive them. Forgive life. Especially if it goes all the way back to your mother. Okay? I hope this wasn't too triggering, but be true to you right now, Virgo, because... It didn't break you. No. Nope. This is your breakthrough. Right now. All right. I wish you kindness, reverence, and gratitude. I really hope this reading helped you, and I'll be here for you next week. Thank you so much, and take care.